Hi there, my name is John and I'm the owner of this YouTube channel and I thought I would talk today about the 2001 through 2005 Women's Artistic Gymnastics Code of Points. This code was unique in that it was um, really the only code to my knowledge that lasted for more than one Olympic cycle without undergoing any significant changes. The code used in the year 2005 was not that different from that which came out at the beginning of the Olympic cycle. I think the biggest difference was just some added elements and some minor changes in element values. This was actually the first code of points that I purchased and studied, and I did that in 2001 because I was watching the U.S. National Gymnastics Championships, and I noticed that almost all of the athletes were scoring 8.9s, 9.0s, maybe a 9.3 was one of the highest scores I was seeing at that first national championships of the new Olympic cycle. And so I purchased the code just to see what was going on and why gymnastics had seemed to have gotten so much harder and why I was no longer seeing the scores in the 9.7s and 9.8s that I had seen at the 2000 Olympics. So I would say that this code of points was fairly different than the one that preceded it, not because it underwent like a major overhaul in terms of its structure, but because the difficulty was increased pretty significantly. In the 1997 Code of Points, which I may do a separate video about, the base score was 9.0. That means that if the gymnast performed all of the basic required elements and all of the special requirements, they could earn a maximum score of 9.0. And to get a full 10.0 start value, they would have to earn a full point in bonus, either from individual difficult skills or from connections. This code of points made things much harder in that respect. The base score went down to 8.8, .8, which doesn't sound like a big change. That only means 1.2 was necessary in bonus for a full start value. But the value of individual connections and also the number of connections available to gymnasts decreased pretty significantly in this code of points. But more about that later. Let's talk first about the vault. There were five vaults in this code of points that could score a maximum 10.0 start value, and several of them actually have never been performed by a female gymnast. So the Yurchenko 2.5 was a 10.0 start value. The Yurchenko double twist in this code of points was downgraded to a 9.8, whereas it had been a 9.9 .9 vault in the previous code. Similarly, at Sukahara with two and a half twists, which has never been performed to my knowledge, was a 10.0. The Tsukahara double twist downgraded to a 9.9, previously had been a 10.0 vault in the 2000 Olympic cycle. Also, a vault that was later performed during this code of points, first maybe in 2002, 2008, or 2003, excuse me, I'm not really sure, but that would be a Luconi entry vault, a vault family named after, I guess, an Italian gymnast named Luconi, L-U-C-O-N-I, at least that's who's named in this code of points as originating vault. That is a Yurchenko with a full twist, onto the springboard. And this vault actually became um, very popular during this Olympic cycle. The 10.0 version of the vault um, ended up being a full on, a full twisting Yurchenko on with a full twisting back layout off. So kind of like a full twisting Yurchenko but with a full twist on during the first flight phase and the, the entry phase. That vault I actually got very sick of seeing during this code of points, um, vaults in that family, I mean, because most gymnasts did not seem to complete the full twist 
really during the entry phase. It was more like a three-quarter twist onto the board, and I just thought it was kind of ugly, quite frankly. Another vault that was a 10.0 start value that I've never seen performed would have been a front handspring with a full twist onto the springboard and then a front layout off of the springboard. Also mentioned in the code of points is a two and a half twisting front layout. So kind of like a Rudy, except with an additional half twist. I've never seen a female gymnast perform that before. And finally, so I guess this actually is going to end up being six vaults rather than five, was the front handspring double front, which at this point had only been performed by one gymnast successfully, and that was Yelena Produnova, for whom the vault is named. A vault like a Yurchenko, one and a half, had a 9.7 start value in this code of points. A Rudy had a 9.9 .9 start value later on in the year 2005 when Chung Fei did a half twist on Rudy off in laid out position. That also became a 10.0 start value, of course. The Corkina vault which she did at the 2000 Olympics initially, which is like a Chang, except in a tucked position, that had a 9.9 .9 start value in this code of points. So, in short, 10.0 vaults became rather rare. Moving on to the uneven bars. In this code of points, the uneven bars became one of the lower scoring events, which was not the case in the code of points that surrounded it, I would say. I would say in the code of points used at the 2008 Olympics, uneven bars actually became one of the higher scoring events for some gymnasts who were particularly skilled at it. And I actually think that's kind of why Nastia Liukin won the 2008 all-around Olympic gold medal, despite having a relatively weak vault. She was able to make up a substantial amount of room on the uneven bars, but I digress. In this code of points, in order to get a tenth of bonus in connection, a gymnast had to combine a C skill and a D skill, or two D skills. That's a big change because in the previous code of points, a combination of two D skills would have yielded two tenths in bonus. In order to get two tenths in bonus in this code of points, gymnast had to combine E skills and D skills. And it, at least in the 2001 through 2004 portion of the code, I'm not sure actually if this was revised in 2005, but for most of this code of points, um, it didn't really matter what the skills were. They could both be pirouetting skills, but E plus D meant two-tenths in bonus. So those combinations were very uncommon prior to 2001. If you watch the Olympic bar final in 2000, there is only one gymnast who performs what would have been considered an ED combination in the 2001 Code of Points. And that was Svetlana Korkina when she performed a Rikna or a Stalder Tukachev into a Pak Salto. Most of the other gymnasts in that final were combining D skills and the value of those combinations were cut in half for this Code of Points. There was another significant general change to this code points, which I forgot to mention earlier on in the video, and that was the addition of a new category of skills called the Super E category. Super E was a term borrowed from men's gymnastics. The Super E category of skills, which we now call F, yielded three tenths in bonus. On the uneven bars, for example, super E skills in this new code of points were things like a double twisting, double tuck, dismount, a full twisting, double layout, and also a double twisting, double layout. 
I'm pretty sure that a full twisting double layout was a super E skill. Also, uh, releases, there were some super E skills. The Def, or the one and a half twisting Ginger. The Shushinova, which is now only an E skill as of 2015. That is sort of like a full twisting giant into a Tkachev. That was a super E. Um, triple back, dismount, triple, uh, that was a super E. Those are the main ones I can think of at this point. On to the balance beam. Pretty main, major changes here, especially in terms of the value of individual connections. What I'd like to show you is this document that summarizes all of the different connections in the 1993 to 1996 code of points. And looking at this, uh, this, this isn't even just the balance beam, but all of the events. But the middle column summarizes the balance beam. And you'll see that there are quite a few connections. Uh, just looking at this, I guess that there's about 15. And many of those connections are quite valuable. Um, in 1993, there were actually connections that were more valuable than any individual skills, because skills only went up to E at that point for two tenths. And we see that some of these connections yield three tenths in bonus. Three tenths back then, by the way, would have been half of all of the bonus needed to have a 10.0 start value. Not so, <clears throat> excuse me, in the 2001 code of points. The acro gym combination, there was uh, only one of them available, and that was a combination of two C skills, which would yield only one tenth in bonus. So during this time period, you might have seen gymnasts combine a switch split leap into a full twisting tuck jump, which would have yielded two tenths total, one tenth for the full twisting tuck jump, which at the time was the D skill, and one tenth for the entire connection. Nowadays, we actually see gymnasts able to connect a D skill into an A, sk uh, an a skill, like a front tuck into a split jump that was not available in this code of points. And so connections on beam, I actually think, became quite boring in this code of points. Thinking more about acrobatic elements, there were also just a handful of connections available. Uh, two C skills would yield a tenth in bonus. So you could do a back handspring layout, step out, layout, step out, and get a tenth in bonus there. Nowadays, that combination is actually worth two tenths in bonus, one for the CC combination, and one tenth for the fact that three skills are connected. Similarly, uh, a D skill connected to a C skill would have yielded one tenth in bonus only. It is more than that today, depending on the nature of the connection. Uh, an aerial cartwheel into a back layout step out nowadays would be worth two tenths in bonus, not um, in 2001. Similarly, a B, B, D combination would yield a tenth in bonus. In this code of points, a two-footed layout was only a D skill, so back handspring, back handspring, layout, common amongst Chinese gymnasts, would have yielded two tenths total, one for the connection, one for the D skill. A BBE combination was worth two tenths. This would have been very rare. I can only think of one gymnast who I remember seeing perform this. That was Oana Bon, who did a backhand spring, backhand spring, full twisting, back tuck, and eventually she did a full twisting layout, which would have been a super E skill. Either way, that series was worth two tenths. Both of those connections also applied to dismounts. And there was really only one other connection worth two tenths, and that was the B, C, D combination. There were very few gymnasts who actually performed it in that order. Um, I can think of two, a Romanian gymnast who was at the 2004 Olympics, Silvia Stroescu. She did a backhand spring step out, layout step out, a nodi. 
two tenths in bonus from the connection, one tenth from the Anodi, which is a D skill. And also Svetlana Horkina due to back handspring, step out, back layout, step out, rule folda, or a full twisting, back handspring, swing down. Most gymnasts who did a series on beam that was worth anything did a front aerial walkover, which was upgraded to a D skill in this code of points. Back handspring, step out, layout, step out which satisfied the BCD combination for two tenths bonus even though the order of the skills would have been reversed in, in, in those particular aerial series that I got very sick of seeing during this code of points and in several that followed um, up until I guess 2013 when combinations that reversed directions like that, which I never really thought were real combinations, were eliminated. So slim pickings in terms of getting bonus from tumbling or combining jumps, leaps on the beam. A couple of skills I can remember were upgraded to super E elements the full twisting layout, obviously, the double front dismount, the double Arabian dismount done by Carly Patterson, the full twisting double back dismount. A triple twist was only an E in this code of points. I actually kind of miss the balance beam under this code of points when I compare it to balance beam routines that I often see now. But at the time, I hated it. Uh, in the initial years, it seemed very difficult for gymnasts to get a 10.0 start value. And most of the gymnasts who did, did not do it through interesting tumbling in the early years, at least from what I remember watching the U.S. National Championships. But they did it by combining leaps and jumps, particularly jumps like full twisting tuck jumps that I never found particularly attractive and um, have since been devalued, I think, for that reason. They were overused and abused, I think, during the code of points I'm discussing right now. And in 2006, those jumps were devalued to B skills, which I think is sort of um, so low, uh, meant really just to kind of punish gymnasts um, for, you know, I mean, to give gymnasts really no reason to attempt them at all. One other thing about the balance beam, Arabians and full twisting tuck backs were only E skills. Uh, they did not get upgraded to three tenths of bonus until the G skill was later introduced in the 2006 code of points. So if you think back to um, a very familiar routine from the 2004 Olympics. Let's talk about Carly Patterson for a second. She did a standing Arabian. That's two tenths in bonus. She did a front aerial walkover into a back handspring step out, into a layout step out. That gives her three tenths of bonus, so we're at five now. Let's fast forward to her dismount. Round off back handspring, double Arabian. That was worth five tenths in bonus. Two for the connection, three for the super E skill. So now we're at a full point. She needs two more. I believe that in her Olympic routine, she also performed a front tuck into a sheep jump. Two tenths for those individual D skills and only one tenth for that combination. Because like I said, CC or higher was a tenth in bonus when it came to gym macro combinations. So that would have yielded three tenths. So we're at 13 tenths, which is actually more uh, bonus than she required to have a 10.0 start value. But highly competent gymnast did that sort of thing on occasion, I guess in case they missed a connection or something like that. If we think about Catalina Ponor's 2004 Olympic routine, let's see if I can remember it. She did a 
uh, a nodi into back handspring step out, one arm back handspring, which was a C skill in this code of points, layout step out. So that is a DBC combination with an additional CC combination. So four tenths there. She also did a switch leap into a full twisting back handspring. That would have been two tenths total, one for the combination, one for the D skill. So now we're at six tenths, I believe. She also did a front aerial, back handspring, back pike. So that's another three tenths. And so now we're at nine. I'm counting here on my hands. So she needs three more. She got two more from her dismount. Um, the full twisting double pike. So actually, I made an error earlier in the video. That dismount was only an E skill. It was not a super E. The only super E dismounts were the double front and the double Arabian. Um, so now we're at 11 tenths. The final tenth that she needed for a 10.0 start value came from her one and a half twisting backward dive to handstand, which is a skill called an Omelion chick, I, I believe. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's called an Omelion chick. So that's how she got the 12 tenths necessary for her 10.0 start value. <sighs> okay, if you're still watching, let's move on to the floor exercise. Similar to the balance beam, there was a decrease and extent of connections available to gymnasts, resulting in something I really hated about this code of points, which was the overuse of a limited number of jumps to satisfy bonus requirements to even have a chance of getting a 10.0 start value. In the 2000 code of points, gymnasts did jumps and they often got bonus for them by combining C skills with each other. Um, but often they didn't really need that for a 10.0 start value and they were going above and beyond and it was sort of icing on the cake and kind of more for artistic or compositional value than anything else. Not so in 2001 when gymnasts really needed double twisting tuck jumps, one and a half twisting split leaps and tour jetés in order to get 10.0 start values. So what were the connections in the new code? When it came to combinations of gym and acro elements, there was only one combination available and that was the CD combination worth one tenth in bonus. In the previous two code of points, that would have been worth two tenths in bonus. So what would have satisfied that in 2001? A double turn into a double twisting tuck jump, a double twisting cat leap into a one and a half twisting cat leap, a full twisting straddle jump, which was called a popa, into a double twisting tuck jump, Saw a couple of gymnasts do a triple spin into a full twisting straddle jump, things like that. But I really think that's kind of the extent of it. Corkina got a little bit more creative doing a double twisting cat leap into her signature jump down to prone position on the floor. That one and a half twisting kind of dropped to the floor she did and had named after her. She also did a full twisting split leap into a double twisting tuck jump at one point. Those were sort of more creative CD combinations. In terms of actual tumbling, most gym, uh, I can't think of a single gymnast who got all of her difficulty from tumbling, which I think is unfortunate. Um, the connections there were as follows. Two C skills directly connected would have been a tenth in bonus. A D skill connected to a C skill was worth two tenths in bonus. And this combination seemed to appear in 2001. Uh, I had never seen a gymnast connect skills of that difficulty before on floor, but we started to see two and a half twists into full twisting tuck jumps. At the time, that was a C skill. Now a full twisting uh, front tuck, if, if I said jump before, I meant 
a salto, not a jump. Now it's only a B, but back then it was a C. A D skill connected into a B skill was the only way to get one tenth in bonus um, involving a direct connection of a, a D skill and another salto. Um, so like a two and F twist into a front layout was worth a tenth in bonus. In the previous code of points, D A combinations were worth two tenths in bonus. That means that if you had done a whip back into a two and a half twist into a punch front, you would have gotten five tenths in bonus in the previous code of points. In this new code of points, that would actually have only been worth one tenth in bonus because there was an indirect or direct combination of AA plus D that was worth one tenth in bonus. In order to get uh, also a C skill indirectly connected to a D skill was worth a tenth in bonus. So imagine a one and a half twist, round off back handspring, two and a half twist. And um, that was it. There was actually no C, E combination worth two tenths in this code of points. That came later. There was one combination worth two tenths on the floor exercise and that was a B skill directly connected to an E skill and the only time I ever saw that performed in this code of points uh, was a front layout into a double front uh, originated by Yelena Projunova. There's one other thing that I left out worth one tenth which was a direct connection of an A skill through an E in, through an A skill and an E skill, um, such as a double layout into a punch front, which Chusevitana did in 2001, or a whip into a triple twist. Um, so not a lot of ways to get bonus there. So when I think about some of the more difficult floor routines from this code of points, um, who would have been an example? Well, Chung Fei at the 2004 Olympics, she did a double twisting double, super E skill, so that's three tenths. She did a one and a half, one and a half twist into a front layout, so now that's two more tenths, and we're at five. She then did a full twisting double pike as um, maybe her second pass, so that was two tenths. Now we're at uh, seven total, and she ended with a triple twist, I think. So now we're at nine. That means she got three tenths from doing various dance, jump, leap combinations. Um, something else I guess I should mention that in this code of points, full twisting double backs were upgraded to E skills. They had previously been Ds in the 93 and 97 codes of points. Mm. I guess that's about all I have to say about the floor exercise. It's interesting to note that Podkapaya the skill, a double front with a half twist out, that was only an E in this code of points. So the only super E skills actually on floor were the Dos Santos, which she originated in 2003, the double Arabian and piked position. Mm, full twisting double layout, that was a super E skill. And um, that was it. Uh, and, and also the three and a half twist, actually, which was not in the original publication of, code, of the Code of Points, but was performed later during that.